Right, it's uh, Sunday morning, I'm on my own today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna laminate this floor um, and put skirtings and archetrives and the door reveals on as well. Uh, it's just a little three by three that we've built. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a full tutorial on fitting laminate floor, or at least how I fit it anyway. So if you keep watching, I mean, first things first, I need to clear this room up, get everything off the floor and give me some space to work. It's a bit of a crap hole at the moment, but well, I'll give it. I'll give it a clean, and I'll show you um, how I lay the floor. What we do, um, I give the we fit the flooring as standard on these, and I give the customers a choice of laminate flooring. Uh, we get from B and Q. It's good value for money. It's good quality floor, and I pick these samples because all of them are relatively good to fit, and they've all got a micro bevel on them, which basically means I don't know if you can see that a tiny little bevel on it. So that when all the floors together, there's like a little sort of you know a bevel on the joints because i always go for them type of floors because if it doesn't have a bevel on and the light gets on it you can see the variation in the floor sometimes and it looks awful so i'd advise a micro bevel what i'm going to do then i'm going to first of all i'm going to put down this underlay we use this fiber wood underlay um it's five mil thick again it's from b and q spans a good area it's good if you've got any undulations in your floor and all it'll get over them nice but of course these floors are nice and level because we've already fit the 22 mil area protect on our level base so what I'll do now, um, I'll put the underlay down and then I'll show you how we laminate the laminate flooring. So I've got my knife there which I'm going to cut with the underlay and my saw which I'll cut the uh, laminate flooring. So I've started off by putting the green underlay down, so I've come to the end. So what I want to do now is fit this piece in there. So the easiest way to do that is tuck it under the next piece, score down that line there and then remove that bit. There you go, so that's trimmed, then I'll get the off-cut and I'll stick it over the other end and start a new row. Customers chose this sort of light whitey grey floor, it's the Bilston. I don't know if you see that, the Bilston grey. Uh, so what I've done, I've put two boards there down now and I'm going to measure that one there. This uh, manufacturer advises 10mm expansion gap round. So what I'll do, I don't normally put a packer behind it to keep it off a wall, I just, you know, estimate 10mm. It's quite easy to click together so you're not going to force it. So I'll cut that piece over there. Um, it'll be 10 mil short and then I'll stick the next piece, the off cut, over there and start again. Well, I mean, what, what they generally advise you to do is work out the width of your room, divide it by the board width and it will tell you sort of what kind of slit of a board over, you, you know, rip of a board you're going to have over near the window, but I've never ever bothered doing that in my life, I'll be honest with you. Um, occasionally I've been left short and had to have a little rip, but it's not the end of the world. Manager. The cut there is uh, it's 390 tight to the wall, so I'm going to cut a piece at 380. So what I've done there, I've already measured it at 380. And for those who are novices to this kind of thing, um, the saw's designed, that's 90 degrees and that's 45 degrees. So if you put the saw on the laminate like that and push that tight to the laminate, it will then give you a square. So you don't need a square for this basically. What I'll do then, I'll... Excuse the video work, I'm, I'm on my own today, you know, so square the line across like that, trim that off, and then that off cut there will then go over there. And I'm using these hand saws, um, they're a Baco hand saw, pretty crap to be fair, um, generally go through two or three a week at least. This particular floor, they recommend that you don't have your joints within 300 mil, so I mean, that's 370 ish there. So that's worked out quite nice. Um, obviously you can see the 10 mil gap or thereabouts. It's not a science, do you know what I mean? I mean, they do advise putting packers around, but you don't need them unless the floor clicks in easily. You can just visually see it. And the skirting board obviously will cover that expansion gap. And you do need to leave an expansion gap. It's critical because I've seen floors before and they'll just belly up in the middle. So because sometimes you get variation in colors when it's made at the factory, um, it's always best to open a couple of packs and randomly take them out and put them down and then you won't be left with a patchy floor. So Right, so that's the floor going down. Um, it's a little room, I'm starting to run out of space now. So what I'll do now, I'll just go and have a look over there. And I'm um, quite happy with that gap around the sides there. Like I say, it's not science then. You know, if it's not 10 mil exactly, it won't end the world. Um, that's for sure. And you can see there, look, I've got 15 mil gap on that. Um, over there, a bit less. So what I'll do, I'll just slide the full floor that way. Close that gap up a little bit. And what I'll do now, I mean, you see how easy that floor moves. So because I'm running out of space now, what I'll do now, I'll put the packs of floor over there, which will then weigh it down and stop it moving and also give me more room. So what I said about it being good quality floors, <laughs> just actually turned around and bit me on the ass. Um, never had this problem with this flooring before, but there you go, maybe it's just been machined wrong. And see this part there, look. That joint's nice. That joint's nice. And then that board there is actually narrower than that board. 
Not by a lot, but by enough. You see that joint there is complete. And that joint isn't, so what I'm going to have to do now is take that bit piece out there, bin that. I'll then lose me other bit over there and bin that. Um, so that's, that's, that's one of the problems you can face, I guess. See the definite size difference in boards there. So there you go, that's the room all laminated now. What I'll do is have a little tidy up and then I'll tackle the reveals and the architrace and the skirting board. Just in case, you know, a lot were damaged or all like that, same with going back to the shop. But there, I've got practically a full pack. Now, they don't take them back at the shop, but I think they really should do because... I mean, no, it's not out of tightness, but there'll be somebody there that would want just maybe four packs and two planks, you know? So I don't know why they don't take them back and let you buy them singularly as well, as long as, you know, as long as they're not damaged. It made more sense to me anyway, less wastage. So, reveal to Um What we do, because we need time from doors and stuff like that, we get the plaster to plaster it, then the doors get fit, but then we're left with the reveal. That needs, um, where's the best light in there? There. Uh, that, that needs um, finishing, so what we do is we rip down a bit of skirting board, prime skirting board, um, and then we fit that as a reveal, and then we fit the architrave over the front of that, which it works for us. Um, so what I'm using is this prime skirting board. Uh, I won't use that side, that, that'll go to the back side, but there it is, it's primed. So I'll rip that down to the size I need, and then I'll pin it around the... Um, Round the reveals and then finish the architrave on top and I'll show you what that looks like. Right, so I've ripped down that bit of skirting board there. Uh, it's got a little bit of a crappy edge on it there. So what I'll do now, I'll just run the block plane up that edge just to tidy it up. Um, and then I'm going to fix with this second fix pass load and these 50 mil brads. So what's happened over there? I mean, I like to show you everything we've done. Uh, this OSB hasn't been cut back properly, so it's proud. So the reveal will be twisted like that. So what I've done, I've ripped down these little bits and packers there. You can see I put them all in. Just a little off-cut skirting board, just pack it out so that it's flush. I'm going to put my reveal on there, it'll be nice. And I'll tight. start with the left leg, so I'll cut the left leg and the right leg all the height, bring them in, mark them off, and then I'll cut the head and I'll show you how we'll cut it all the height there. So, what I'll do, look, I'll offer it up and make sure that my expansion gap is covered on my floor. Place it roughly where it wants to go. Sorry about the camera work, but like I said, I'm on my own. So, then I'll draw a line like that and then mirror that, that gap there. Put my line there and then I roughly put a mark to it so I don't balls it up and I know which way I'm going to go with my archer on my 45 and what I'll do is I'll chop that on the I've chop. I've already pre-cut my right leg and over here I've marked the quirk line there. So what I'm going to do now is I've cut a 45 on the head already there look. I'll hold that up in place and I'll mark it where this is going to go. So again I'm on my own, camera works all over. What I'll do is um, that's then sat over on there. I can see it's about right. I'll clamp it on there and then I'll, I've marked that there in conjunction with that line for me to cut that 45 now. From both sides, I've put a bit of glue on there, a bit of wood glue, and now I'm going to offer it up and nice. pin it. So there, so there you go, that's the door reveals and the architrave done. What I'll do then, I'll jump on the skirting board and then when I finish, I'll run back and I'll uh, sand all them joints and fill them if they've opened up a little bit, which they have, you know, it's not in the world. I'm not going to lose my sleep over that, but fill a bit of cork, it's good. Nice white paint finish. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm doing skating boards. Um, I'll start on this wall. I'll put a full piece in there, square. And then on there I'll do a scribe and I'll put this back wall in with a scribe on that corner. And I'll explain and show you how to do a scribe. That piece there, I've cut it nice and tight. What I'm going to do now is put some of this no nails on the back of it. Um, and then I will fix it again with this path load. I'll put a generous amount there on that, all the way down it. Now I'll offer it back in uh, second place. So what I'll do now is push it back to the wall. Push it down and then pin it with the puzzle. So that, that's that piece back. Um, any, any glue has come off the top shots, clear it off like that. What you want to do then is go down and cork that line before you decorate as well. So now what I'll do is I'll cut a little piece for there. And I'll cut this back piece and I'll show you how it's Internal scribe. So what we've done, I've cut a 45 back on there. Obviously that isn't going to go in. But when I get the coping saw and cut that piece off there, that then will sit nice onto that. And then I can sit it up there, mark it there, and that can cut it off. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to hold the camera and show you how I do, do this. So I'll have to skip that part, but I'll show you once I've cut it out. What I'm doing, I'm back cutting at an angle, like that. This is where I normally slap, snap the blade. Uh, I suppose what patience is required here. To get it nice.
You can see at the top there, I haven't actually brought it right to the end because you just left with like a, basically like a little bit of paper that's sitting on the top. No good, so we just cut it off there. There, so that's that done. So what I'll do now is go over here and offer it in. There, now you can see that there's a little gap at the top there. So what you can do now is, let me just turn on this camera right for you, is get the pencil, hold it flat against that skirting board, bring it up like that. Can you see how that's like a tapered line now? I'll then block plane that off and that'll go in. And now it should go in nice. There you go. So that's a nice tight fit. So what I'll do now is I'll mark that there for cutting and then fix that piece. Now I'll just stick a bit of glue on there, no nails, offer it up, pop it in. Sorry, camera's not in there. Pop it in. Couple of pins off cardboard. Jobs are good and with a bit of car. Nice paint finish on that. So basically, that's that little one done now. What I'll do now, I'll do a scribe on that corner and square end on there, off of that bit up. Scribe on that corner, square end on there, off of that in. And do the same with that little reveal as I did with that little reveal. And that'll be a skirt. I'll show you all. So I've cut this back length and I've cut it shy, but it's not the end of the world. Once that goes up there like that, bit of cork in that gap there, and you'll never see it again. So, like I say, I like to show it all. Sometimes it goes right, sometimes it don't, but it's fine. Job of time as well. Beautiful. So it's half twelve-ish now, so I was at being cute at ten o'clock waiting to get my laminate floor on a Sunday. Uh, so it took me about, I don't know, just over two, two hours, two and a half hours I suppose, fit this laminate floor, like I say, it's only a small one, and get all these skirtings on and get the axe and door built on. So, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. I'll let you just have a little look around and I'll bid you farewell. Like I say, John will come now, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I suppose, and he'll cork and he'll fill all this. Thank you for painting.